this is a month that is like no other month because this is the month I will do uh, the last plague, which is the plague of the firstborn. This is the month I'm going to bring you out of Egypt. I'm going to split the Red Sea. Hello. And, and these were dates that God said it is so holy that we cannot, we cannot go back to the normal time system. But I want to share with you today another reason why the month of Nisan is the month of all months. There is no other month like this month. No, not even when we celebrate Rosh Hashanah. No, not even when we celebrate the Day of Atonement, the most important event in human history, the entire reason the Bible was written, the Bible was written for this purpose only, to reveal salvation history and the cross of Jesus Christ. And the reason God sanctified this month when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, because coming out of Egypt in this month, 1,400 years later, an event would take place on a hill called Mount Calvary. And Jesus Christ would die on a cross. And the Lord says, this month is like no other month. This day is like no other day. He will not only die on a cross, but he will rise again. And so everything is going to become new because of him. Can I get a witness? Someone ought to give God the praise. So tonight our focus is on the cross. Tonight our focus is on redemption. Tonight our focus is on salvation. The greatest act in human history, which was Jesus Christ coming down from heaven, becoming a man, dying on the cross for our sins, becoming our penalty, and rising from the dead. Can I get a witness somewhere? Oh, we need to know this is... God organized, orchestrated it because he is the master architect. He arranged it and designed it to be in the springtime. And there's a reason for this, that God ordained that the beginning of God's calendar would be in the springtime and that he ordained that Jesus would die on the cross and rise again in the springtime. Because in the spring, old things have passed away. And all things become new because in the springtime, things that were dead, like in the winter, that which is dead comes back to life. And I want you to know this is the month that God is going to bring some dead things back to life. Can I get a witness somewhere? Somebody ought to say my destiny is about to come back to life. My vision is about to come back to life. My dream is about to come back to life. Can I get a witness somewhere? Your body is about to come back to life. Your vision is about to come back to life. Your children are about to come back to life. God is about to bring resurrection into your life. Because of the month of Nisan. So 1,400 years before the Lord went to the cross, and this is why the lamb had to be slain on the 14th day of the month of Nisan, the Passover lamb. Because everything in the Passover had to have a supernatural similitude of Jesus. It all had to represent the ultimate Passover. This is why the Bible says Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Can we give God the glory and give God the praise? So many miracles have occurred in the month of Nisan that we are going to release to God's people in a moment. We know that in the month of Nisan, God brought us out of Egypt. And in the month of Nisan, hallelujah, every person that lived in Egypt that was under the bondage of slavery before they left after 400 years of not being paid, it was a time of divine compensation 
for all the devastation. God gave the commandment, borrow every woman of her neighbor jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment, and you are going to put it on your children, and you shall spoil the Egyptians, because when you go out, you're not going out empty. I want you to know this is a month you're not going out of your trials empty. You're coming out of your trials with some supernatural substance. God's about to give you some spoil for your toil. God is about to do some things in your life. You're about to start reaping some wonderful blessings because of what you have been through. In the month of Nisan, actually on the 22nd day of Nisan, 22nd day, seven days after the children of Israel left Egypt, this was the time God said the sea is going to split. I want you to know God is about to split your Red Sea. God is about to bring you through the impossible. You see, the Red Sea represents the impossible in your life. And when Moses cried unto God in, uh, the Bible tells us in Exodus chapter 14, verse 15, Moses cried unto the Lord because the Egyptians were behind him and the Red Sea was before him. And the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying unto me? Go forward. This is the month you're going forward into the impossible. Say this with me. This is the month I'm going forward into the impossible. I want you to know, 40 years after the children of Israel came out of Egypt, in the month of Nisan, in the 10th day, of the month of Nisan, the children of Israel were on the shores, hallelujah, of the promised land. And they crossed over into the promised land because of the death and the resurrection of our Lord who died in the month of Nisan and consecrated this month to be a month of all months. You will cross over into your promised land. God has given you his guarantee that you will possess the promises of God. Can I get a witness somewhere? But I want to go over with you something that occurred in the month of Nisan that was one of the most incredible acts in human history. As we look at this, it is the most incredible act of human history because it is all part of the passion of our Lord. It was in the month of Nisan that the Adamic curse was broken. In the month of Nisan, that every Thing sin brought into the world is now going to go into reverse. The curse is going to go into reverse. I want you to see here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we're going to see how Paul, in his incredible theological genius, is going to compare Jesus to the second Adam. We know this is not some philosophical, theological um, insight that he got. This is the divinely God-breathed, inerrant, authoritative word of God. And the Bible says here that as we see, the first Adam, the Bible says, the first man, Adam, was a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit, howbeit. That was not first, which is spiritual. Adam was not spiritual. But that which is natural, he was carnal. And afterward, that which is spiritual. For the first man is earthly. And uh, the first man is of the earth, earthy. But the second man is the Lord of heaven. We need to understand that Adam is the first Adam, but Jesus Christ represents the second Adam. And I want to tell you tonight how. He represents the second Adam. And I want to share with you tonight how the Adamic curse was broken in the month of Nisan through the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. I want us to go for a moment to the actual Adamic curse. So let's look at the book of Genesis 
and we're going to see the Adamic curse in the book of Genesis, and we're going to see the effects of that Adamic curse. And I want you to pay attention to certain words that are being used here in the Adamic curse, because we're going to see how Jesus took it upon himself and how he became the curse for our sake. All right? If we look at this, the Bible says in, um, in Genesis, looking at Genesis chapter 3, Let's look at the Adamic curse itself. It says, and unto Adam, he said, because you have hearkened to the voice of your wife and you have eaten of the tree, which I commanded thee, saying you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In sorrow, you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face, you shall eat your bread till you return to the ground from whence you were taken. For dust you are, and dust you shall return. All right, I want to show you why the passion of our Lord had to begin in the garden. Okay, the first Adam was put into a garden where all sin and disobedience came forth. I want you to understand sin entered the world in a garden. Okay, sin entered the world, and when sin entered the world, it was not just sin that affected man in the sense that all men, now uh, man's nature was sinfully corrupted. We know that. But I want you to know disorder also entered the world. Everything that was in order came out of order in God's creation. I want you to understand everything uh, became disordered through the sin of Adam. Emotional disorders began with the sin of Adam. Emotional family dysfunction began with the sin of Adam. Inordinate disordered affections and disordered emotions emotions began with the sin of Adam. This is why Cain slew Abel. It was not natural for a brother to murder a brother and for a brother to become jealous of a brother and for a brother to be ruthless and leave his brother there. But yet that sin, which was the first sin that we see after Adam and Eve's sin, entered the world because everything was under such a curse that it was turned in side out. Even the time, even creation itself was affected. So that God when he created the heavens and the earth did not create day to be in, did not create our days, our beginnings of the day to start in the morning. The real beginning of the day should have started in the evening. This is why the Bible says the evening and the morning were the first day. But even time itself became corrupted through the sin of Adam and everything in God's order was turned inside out through the sin of Adam. So now in order for Adam's curse to go into reverse, all of creation, everything in creation had to be affected by the sacrifice that would be sacrificed for the sin of Adam. Do you all understand what I'm talking about? Why was Jesus in a garden? All right, first of all, we're going to see the passion begins in the garden, the garden of Gethsemane, the garden of olives. And I want you to know that just as the sin of Adam began in a garden, so did the passion of our Lord begin in a garden. The first Adam sinned in a garden. The second Adam said, not my will, but thine be done in a garden. Can I get a witness somewhere? Now, I want you to look at the Adamic curse itself. The Adamic curse is, the scripture says that God said to Adam, by, he said, cursed is the ground for your sake. Thorns and thistles will it bring forth to thee. And in the sweat of your face shall you eat your bread. Now, I want you to go with me to Luke chapter 22. And I want you to see the way Luke writes the agony in the garden. Okay, first of all, we need to look and see. Verse says, in verse 39, and it came out, and went as he wont 
to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, notice the place is something very important because whenever we see a place where God's presence is, it is always known as the place. And when he came to the place, he said unto them, pray ye that ye enter not into temptation. And the Bible says, and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed, verse 42, saying, Father, if you be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will but thine be done. And there appeared an angel from heaven strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat, say it with me, his sweat. His sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling to the ground. I want you to know Jesus had to sweat, and the sweat had to turn to blood. Because why? The sweat broke the curse of Adam. Because the Bible says, by the sweat of your face, this was the curse of Adam. God said to Adam, by the sweat of your face, you are going to till the ground. So I want you to know that when Jesus began to sweat, and he was in in earnest agony that sweat turned to blood because he was battling all principalities and powers of rebellion he was battling all principalities and powers of disobedience he was taking upon himself the disobedience of Adam he was destroying the disobedience of Adam through his own uh, yes to God by saying father if you be willing let this cup pass from me Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. So the sweat that was upon his face broke the sweat in the curse of Adam as it turned to great drops of blood falling to the ground because the ground was that which was cursed in the curse of Adam. Can I get a witness somewhere? So as he agonized and as his sweat turned to blood and as it fell on the ground, the beginning of the Adamic curse was broken. The blood touched the ground and the curse was broken. The Lord said, thorns and thistles will it bring forth to thee. Sometimes we wonder why did the king of kings have to wear a crown of thorns? Why did the king of kings wear a crown that they mocked him with? Because that crown of thorns represents the thorns that came up from the ground, from the Adamic curse. He became the curse for us. The Bible says, hallelujah, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. He became a curse for us. Hallelujah. Can I get a witness? The Bible says he be, uh, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. Hallelujah. So we need to understand that he released us from the curse because the Bible says cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. So tonight, as we begin this journey into this week, this week is not like any other week. This time is not like any other time. God commands his people. You had to set a calendar. This calendar is a time when it's Kodesh. It's holy. The month means holy. Kodesh, to make holy, to start new, to start over. And he's saying, this is a beginning for you. This is a new time for you. And the time zone for the children of Israel was a prelude if you will, to Calvary. Because everything takes us to Calvary through the Bible. Through the Bible, we see a trail, tracking the trail of blood evidence. Blood evidence begins in Genesis, and it ends, hallelujah, in Revelation. Because blood evidence 
is one of the primary themes of the entire scripture. You say, Dr. Corral, what do you mean by blood evidence? I mean that every sacrifice and every prefiguring of atonement is a prophetic prefiguring of what Jesus did on Calvary's cross. So this week, as we begin this week, we have to understand the greatest event in human history happened in Nisan. So the Lord says, I'm letting you out of Egypt through the blood of these lambs for one reason and one reason only. Because everything that you are going to do to come out has to match and has to be the example, has to be a spiritual, supernatural similitude of what is going to happen on Calvary's cross 1,400 years later. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague will not be upon you to destroy you in the houses where you are. Would you stand to your feet, please, and let us begin.